Let's just do this. Let's do this. You can help somebody. All right. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. So if you are noticing, I am in my bedroom in my pajamas um, because I was getting ready to go to bed, but I was thinking about everything and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a video on this and make it probably like a series because there's so much to talk about, but what I'm going to be talking about, and I'm also trying not to edit any of this because I don't feel like editing any of it, which is why it'll probably be in series because then this video will drag on and be four days old. Um, so, or <laughs> four days old, four days long. So, um, so I'm going to be talking today a little bit about depression, anxiety, um, and oppression. Um, so for those of you who know me, you know that I am a Christian woman, not afraid to say it. Um, I lived my life for many, many years once I became a Christian. Um, I, I, I lived my life, you know, for God. I made good decisions. I made good choices in my life and... I always had, you know, a conscience, conscience, conscious, a conscious, I, that word, I don't even know how to say that word, but I always had that, and I never really did anything wrong, um, but there are many, many things and many, many times where things that I would go through in my life, I would just just so nobody knew, so my mother didn't know, so my dad didn't know, you know, I I just completely deleted it out of my mind. It happened, I was sad about it, I was scared about it, but then I just, like I said, deleted it out of my life and out of my mind, so I didn't have to think about it again. So, I did have, I, I kind of started with making the wrong decisions in my life because a lot of times, you know, I just felt like my parents were mass strict on me and I didn't, what were they protecting me, trying to protect me from or trying to keep me from? I want to go out there and look for myself and see, you know, what they're trying to keep me from. But at the end of the day, um, I, um, I'm, I'm trying to put these words together, you know? This is why I'm saying um a lot. Um, so anyways, at the age of 16, I lost my virginity. I knew that it was wrong, but I did it anyways. So I, when I became a Christian, I think I was, what, 14? And my parents had bought me and my sister a promise ring. We went in front of the church, in front of the pastor, and we promised and made a vow to God that we would save our, you know, our virginities until we got married. So once I turned, you know, 16, I started hanging out with a certain crowd and I ended up losing my virginity to my boyfriend at the time. And we were together for about a year and it was very toxic. Um, it, it made me feel very unwanted unloved used um and i just i remember being put a lot in the predicament of i had to do what he wanted or else i i would make him angry and you know being 16 years old you're very very impressionable and you you have something for the first time that you don't want to let go because you think you're going to marry this man and you think you're going to be with him for the rest of your life at 16 years old. So my mind at the time was very impressionable. So he was the first guy that I brought home to my parents and especially my mom because I was living with my mom at the time because my parents were divorced. And, you know, I um, I was scared to bring him around, but... 
off bat you know my mom my sister never liked him and I just I just remember always being the one to fight for what I wanted so I always defended him I always made sure that everyone else liked him because I did so moving forward years a couple years down the line I met my ex-husband um and we ended up kicking it we were friends for a year and a half first um you know he was dating someone I was dating this guy and you know we ended up kicking it together and once me and this guy were broken up and you know he ended up cheating on me and with one of my friends and ended up leaving him I was so hurt I felt like I would never get over this breakup you know then I ended up kicking it with my ex-husband and we ended up you know giving birth to our first daughter um, at the time I was 18 years old I was I, I remember walking down the stage while I was graduating and being four months pregnant walking down you know the stage graduating and had a belly had a maternity dress on and you know I I think I, I think back to, to that time and I was like I think to myself I'm like you know what I would never change my babies for nothing never no matter how it happened they're here because they were they were destined to be here and they were meant to be here so at the end of the day I would never regret having them so we had her then when she was nine months old we decided to get married it was the right thing to do we already had a baby so we were like you know what it's the right thing to do so let's just get married so i was 19 when i got married i know very young but um i was 19 when you know i got married and we had her then you know i went through a lot with my health i got diagnosed at 19 years old with multiple sclerosis if you don't know what that is look it up google it um ms is short for multiple sclerosis normally what people call it so i got diagnosed at 19 when i with multiple sclerosis one of my the first time in like thinking back now i remember the times that i even younger than that 15 years old 16 years old i remember having relapses and never thinking i never knew what ms was until i got diagnosed with it so 19 years old i got diagnosed with ms and i i thought that you know my babe my first baby was just in a little carrier so she was a baby i remember thinking that i just got a death sentence and i remember we were the the way i found out i found out was it, we, I went out one night with my ex-husband and we I wore makeup so I went to bed not cleaning my makeup off my face had eyeliner on mascara everything so I fell asleep when I got home and then I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and I couldn't see out of my left eye so I was like oh man I think I have makeup in my eye so I try to wash it out I still couldn't see anything then I went to sleep again and I said you know what whatever I'll just I'll just clean it out in the morning and it'll be fine. So I woke up that morning and my I was still living with my mom because I wasn't married yet. And I had the baby and I remember calling her because she worked that day. And I remember calling her and saying, Ma, I can't see out of my eye. Like I cleaned the makeup off and everything. And I still can't see anything. So she's like, all right, well, we were going to New Jersey the day after um, to go be over there for, I think it was about a week maybe two weeks, maybe a week to go see my grandmother. Cause my grandmother was, she had Alzheimer's and she had pancreatic cancer. So, you know, my grandmother was like my mom too. I miss her to death. Um, but we were gonna go see her the day after. So I remember calling her, she's like, all right, we'll call Sears, the optical at Sears and see if you can get in before we go. So I was like, all right, I'll do that. So I, I you know, I had a car at the, yeah, I had a car at the time, my first car. And um, I called them, I went in for an appointment, and then he said, well, he's like checking my eye, and he said, well, it looks like you have a swollen nerve in your eye, so I need you to go see an ophthalmologist. 
So I was like, all right. So I told my mom, I said, Ma, he wants me to go see an ophthalmologist. Um, you know, which is who I work for now. Um, so he, I, we, we were like, okay, when we get back, we'll do that, right? So I think it was like a week and a half later. Um, we're in Jersey with my grandmother, my aunt, you know, my cousins. And I had the baby with me. And as every day goes on, my eye gets clearer and clearer and clearer. So I was like... By the time we got back to Florida, you know, my eye was completely clear. I could see everything. So, but she still wanted me to go see the ophthalmologist. So we made the appointment and we went to go see the specialist. So once we saw the specialist, he did like a million. He did an ultrasound of my eyeball. He like of the nerves that he did a, um, you know, the, um, the optos, everything. Like he did everything. So he then said, I need, you know, I did to my mom. I need you to take your daughter to go see a neurologist. So he never told me why, never told my mother why that I had to go see a neurologist. So I'm holding the papers in the car. I'm just looking through the papers and then I see on the bottom of the papers possible multiple sclerosis. I was like, well, I don't even know what that is. So I don't remember if I told my mother that or if I just kept it to myself. So we call the neurologist and she wants me to do all this testing. So from Monday to Friday, I had testing every single day. I had to do an MRI, I had to do a CAT scan, I had to do a spinal tab. Let me tell you, <coughs> excuse me, I don't wish a spinal tab on my worst enemy. That junk hurts so bad. And I had a migraine for three days afterwards. So whatever, I, like I said, Monday through Friday, I had a testing, some type of testing, blood work, um, just everything. So I then, the week after is when I go see the neurologist. So she's looking through my, my MRI scans and she puts it up in her office and she then proceeds to turn around and tell us, do you see, she looks at me and she says, do you see all those white spots in your brain? I was like, yeah. So she says, those are lesions. So I said, well, what are lesions? And she says, well, lesions are basically dead myelons, like dead nerves in your brain. So she says, all those relapses that you've been having is because of that. So I said, well, what does that even mean? And she says, well, I'm sorry to tell you, but you have MS. You have multiple sclerosis. So again not knowing what the heck that was i just i thought she gave me a death sentence and i was like oh my god i just had a baby like who's gonna be there for my baby and mom you're gonna have to take care of my baby and like i'm thinking the worst right she says no 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 um, and she was all the way in miami at the time and we were living in Boynton beach so she says no 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 she's like listen i'm gonna put you on a medication um it's called rebif she said what it is, is you're going to have to inject yourself three times a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with this injection and this medication. And it's going to help those symptoms basically not diminish 100%, but it's going to help you to not progress with the MS. So I said, oh my God, like, I'm just, I'm crying. My sister was there too. She's hysterical. My mother's crying and we're all crying like freaking idiots and not knowing exactly what it was. So she, um, whatever, we leave. <laughs> my mother gets, you know, the prescription, the RX for it. And we, she goes straight to Walgreens and fills the prescription and, um, you know, then eventually I end up getting the medication. I start taking it, start injecting myself three times a week. Um, but here's the thing. This video is already 14 and a half minutes long. So with this said, I'm going to stop this video right here and I'm going to come back and we're going to keep, you know, recording this video because like I said, I want this to be kind of like sessions um, and I want this to help somebody out there. So I want to continue to talk about my testimony and I want to continue to talk about, you know, where I was because I'm starting from small, kind of starting from scratch to where I am today. Today is February 28th, 2022. Um, so like I said, 
This video is 15 minutes long already. So I'm going to let you guys go here. I am not um, editing this video. It's going up raw. And with the videos coming up, I'm going to get naked on here. Not literally, but I am going to just open up about everything that I've been through. So if you still want to see kind of what I've been through and the raw end of things, then come back, watch my other videos and watch to the end. Okay. All right, guys. Again, not again, but <laughs> I'm, I'm so tired right now. I need to go to bed now, but you guys don't forget to always stay beautiful inside and out. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.